We're so excited to announce the Lieutenant Governor is going to be part of our cabinet as the Secretary of Tourism and Branding. As you know, we separated commerce from tourism and we decided we wanted to have a specific Secretary of Commerce, which is Sean Copeland. And I thought, what better way to start our administration by showing Oklahomans that we're working together. And the Lieutenant Governor is going to be a fantastic salesperson for the state. He is a fantastic business person and uh, he's going to be a great ambassador for tourism. So I'm excited to have him on the cabinet. He's also going to be serving uh, as, in a special role uh, as an advisor to a committee over commerce as well and focusing on small business, um, focusing on the 117 different opportunity zones across our state that the Trump administration along with um, uh, Governor Fallon rolled out uh, and it's going to be a tremendous opportunity for Oklahoma to recruit businesses uh, to our state. So we've also uh, tasked the Lieutenant Governor with that. Uh, we're so excited about that. And he, w he did a great job on our transition team. Um, so he was part of our transition as we were getting ready for the inauguration. So can't thank him, about, thank him for that enough as well. Uh, but we just wanted Oklahoma to know that uh, it's important that the Lieutenant Governor and myself work together. He's a fantastic ambassador for the state, and I just want to thank you for joining the uh, the cabinet. Thank you. So Appreciate let me let you, you uh, yeah, absolutely. Appreciate let me let you uh, address the crowd. Good. Well, thank you all for being here, and Governor can't uh, can't thank you enough. Um, uh, we got to know each other on the campaign trail, and and you're really going to see a working relationship and a real partnership between the governor and lieutenant governor. Uh, that's going to be good for everybody, uh, for everyone across uh, all of our 77 counties. Uh, a, a few notes on tourism. Um, if you heard me uh, during the campaign, you know how passionate I am about tourism. Uh, I firmly believe that uh, as a state, you got to play to your strengths. You have to play to your strengths as a state, and tourism is a strength. It's a growing economic force in Oklahoma. Uh, tourism is. Uh, we, we know some of the statistics, third largest industry, uh, but state tax collection from tourism has jumped over 20 percent since 2010. So this is a clear strength uh, in Oklahoma as we look for more revenue. Why don't you start with an agency that's actually creating revenue for the state of Oklahoma? Uh, the, the advertising that we've done, uh, not just in Oklahoma, but across the country and across the world is working. Uh, we need to maximize that effort uh, and put a brand together. So this is a Secretary of Tourism and Branding. Uh, the governor and I have talked a lot about that brand uh, and it, instilling some pride uh, in our four million citizens in, in this state uh, around a new branding campaign as well that, that uh, certainly in the weeks and months ahead uh, we'll be meeting uh, together on. Um, uh, it, on the opportunity zones, and actually one of my favorite quotes on tourism, tourism also is the front door to economic development. And I think this is an important point. Tourism is economic development. If we can get people off our roads and bridges in Oklahoma, they fall in love with the state. They fall in love with the people. We know that, uh, it, uh, those of us that are Oklahomans, but we've got to get them off our roads and bridges uh, and, and seeing all the great assets that we have across our 77 counties. So tourism is economic development. It's really the front door to everything that we want to be uh, as a state, to be a top 10 state, economic growth. Uh, it really starts with tourism because it's the front door. On the, uh, the commerce uh, side, uh, the governor is absolutely correct. We have 117 zones. Uh, in this state. Uh, the mayor in Oklahoma City and the mayor in Tulsa uh, have, have been uh, certainly working on this, but we have 77 counties. So the governor and I have spent a lot of time talking about this, how important it is to have somebody in commerce, have somebody in the executive branch that's able to, to really bird dog that process, go across our 77 counties to make sure that our local elected officials in, seven, in, in all 77 counties know what those zones are, uh, can, can get through the loops and, and, and all the hoops on the federal side as, as, as far as the, how that law works. Uh, it, it really is a big opportunity for the state, um, and I'm extremely uh, excited about working on, on the commerce side as well. They will dovetail very nicely to the other commerce and tourism. That will still happen. That will still be uh, uh, Secretary Copeland and I will be working on a daily basis uh, with me over in tourism. And so you'll still see a lot of interaction between commerce and tourism moving forward, but as the governor said, we thought it was very important uh, with, with, with how large of an impact tourism has currently to have a standalone uh, Secretary of Tourism and Branding 
uh, over the next four years, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting started. So, Governor, thank you very much. Questions? Governor, what's been your feedback so far from employees or others involved in commerce or tourism about the changes that you've made? Well, I, you know, one of the things, we just got out of our cabinet meeting, and uh, both uh, my Secretary of Commerce and then the Lieutenant Governor, just going by and visiting with their agencies, we are hearing tremendous feedback. I toured two agencies yesterday. It's so important that uh, uh, the, the state workers know that we're in this together, and we're getting tremendous feedback. They're very, very excited about a new administration and a new direction. Um, and so we, I just can't say enough great things about the, the people that are working here and uh, I visited OMES and also visited uh, the wildlife yesterday, and uh, it's just fantastic. And I know that Lieutenant Governor, you had a great time visiting with the, the 700 employees in, in tourism. How many cabinet posts do you have left to fill? I think we have four left to fill. Governor, uh, one new industry uh, that's taking off in Oklahoma is the medical marijuana industry, but there is a lot of uncertainty about what the legislature might do. I, I haven't heard you talk much about your thoughts on that industry, and do you have any intentions to um, change how that industry is operating in Oklahoma? Well, you know, I, I, we've got to make sure that our businesses are protected. Um, you know, the people spoke, and, and uh, they passed medical marijuana last year. Uh, so we've got to make sure that we regulate that. Uh, we've got to make sure that the businesses can also perform, and businesses know uh, how they're going to drug test, how they're going to um, you know, provide a safe working environment for uh, their employees and their manufacturing facilities uh, and the trucks that are driving down our roads. So there's still some questions there that I'm working with the legislature on to make sure that the businesses know how they're going to be able to regulate that uh, because you've got, uh, you've got some conflicts, obviously, uh, between the, the federal, federal law and, and, and a recreational use of that. So we've got to make sure it truly is medical uh, like the people voted on. You know that to appoint the director of the Department of Tourism and Recreation, do you have someone in mind for that position, or are you sticking with Mr. Dunn? You know, um, we're going to interview the person that's there, but uh, we've also are interviewing 10 other people as well. The Lieutenant Governor and I uh, have already had several interviews. This is a big difference between, uh, you know, somebody coming from the private sector. Oklahomans want me to make the right decision, and so I'm really taking it very seriously. I'm in all these interviews. I'm literally interviewing 10 people per, per, per position. I'm driving my staff crazy because I'm making them bring back five more, and, and uh, I'm getting into the weeds because Oklahomans want me to make sure that we're delivering good services, and this is a big, huge service organization, and we're going to be a customer-focused government, and uh, these, are, these are large agencies that spend a lot of tax do taxpayer dollars and, uh, and I want to get that right. So uh, I'm not just appointing. If I didn't want any change to happen, I would just keep appointing the same people. Uh, but Oklahomans want me to make sure that I'm hiring the right people. So the lieutenant governor and I take that very seriously. Uh, we actually just talked about it today. He's got two more interviews. He doesn't know this. I threw one more interview on there. Uh, so, so next week we'll be interviewing uh, uh, some people for that executive director position to work closely with him. Timeline for filling this in? No timeline. One area that I would mention too on commerce, and we were talking about this this morning, is that from and the governor mentioned it on the small business side is entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, we have a lot of great momentum in this state right now with the Oklahoma City Thunder Launchpad, uh, our one accelerator. You know, I, I mentioned have mentioned often Colorado has 13 accelerators. Uh, we are working the public-private partnerships on that on that side. So you're going to see, I, I, we we certainly. Uh, are going to be pushing for this much more interaction there um, uh, and, and really helping foster our entrepreneurs in this state so that they don't go to Kansas, Kansas City, Houston, Dallas, and these other towns going into these accelerators, that they, but that they stay right here in Oklahoma. Uh, and so this will be a big initiative through commerce as well, is making sure that we're fostering entrepreneurship and small business growth in Oklahoma, uh, unlike any time in state history. Can you explain a little bit more about the branding side of this? I mean, it's more than just putting a new ad campaign out there, right? Yes, it is. Um, and, and it's the collaboration from across uh, across agencies as well, which is a key point. I'm not talking about a branding campaign. We're not talking about a branding campaign just for tourism. I mean, this is a branding campaign across agencies. Um, and, and, and again, as most states have uh, and, and have, un, have, have gone under. And so um, I, I think uh, our, our brand, again, I, I certainly hope it's more than the Twitter bird on our license plate. Um, it was the line that I used on the campaign trail. 
Um, it, it's got to be better than that and bigger than that. Uh, and so, and this will be, again, timeline for that, no timeline for this either. That This is something that, that we're going to be working very closely together on, uh, but, but it is not just in tourism uh, or, or commerce for that matter. It, this collaboration among government agencies, state agencies, has got to be better. Uh, we talked a lot about that in our cabinet meeting this morning. Uh, and so this will be a, a, a branding effort. Some of it is advertising. You know, some of it is. What are we projecting? What are, what are we doing outside? What, what's our regional footprint uh, with TV, direct mail, digital ads? Uh, it, so there is a big piece of that, uh, but it is bigger than that, yes. So are you going to hire an ad agency to help you with this? We have an ad agency that, that uh, currently uh, a contract in tourism right now. Um, and there's been a lot of different ad agencies that we've used over the last, de over the last couple decades. Uh, but uh, we do have an ad agency inside tourism right now. Um, that uh, that contract's up in a year or two, uh, that certainly we'll be having conversations with. Some, you know, I will say with the tourism department, the, a lot of those services have been brought in-house over the last few years and have done a very good job, um, uh, the website being one example of that. Uh, and so there'll be ongoing conversations there, too, as far as how much, how much uh, do we bring in-house versus outsourcing uh, to help save uh, taxpayer dollars as well. What about the tax incentives? I mean, that seems to be a big part of bringing business. Where do you guys find that balance, particularly with the wind industry, because they've been a big, been a hot button issue taking tax incentives away that were promised? Yeah, um, every every rebate, every incentive we're looking at right now. I mean, inside uh, tourism, again, with me being uh, uh, secretary of tourism, you have the film. Uh, rebate uh, that, that um, uh, certainly we have a lot of great momentum right now with our film uh, uh, commission right now in Oklahoma. So that's being looked at. Talked with Roger, uh, Senator Thompson, and a few other uh, reps and senators about that. So everyone's going to be looked at. It, it has to be done uh, in a te uh, in a very tedious way to make sure that we're looking at everything. Is it a net positive impact to the state, tax revenue, or jobs? Uh, and so we're looking at every one of those right now. The governor, you know, is putting together your executive budget. Um, how's that process going? Are you Uh, yes, we, we are. Uh, you know, the Secretary of Budget is uh, former Senator Maisie, and um, we have, uh, I think, our third draft of the budget uh, meetings coming up on Tuesday. Uh, we're, we're really excited about it. This, and then I, I told uh, uh, Senator Maisie that I'd also be bringing in uh, the Speaker of the House and the Pro Tem of the Senate because I want to make sure that they're part of this process as well. So when I roll out the State of the State uh, on February 4th, and our budget, then we they have buy-in. We've got to talk through some of these things, and I just uh, that's the way I'm going to lead is is uh, be really inclusive with with those guys as uh, um, and you know the, really the House and the Senate. Uh, but you know, being fiscally responsible uh, and making sure that I sure up the rainy day fund is really really important to me because uh, we can't have another situation where we cut core services. Um, and uh, that's just being fiscally responsible when we do have a budget surplus, and so we plan on uh, we plan on doing that this year. Have there two more questions? Is the executive branch going to need more money to function this year? Because you're obviously making a lot of hires. Fallon's going to be uh, working on the skeleton staff toward the end. Is there enough money to pay for all your personnel? Well, you know, the thing that we're trying to get our arms around is. Uh, you know, the, the, the governor's budget was pulled from a certain, a couple other different agencies as well. So I don't think we're going to need any more net dollars, but we're trying to be as transparent as possible. And so we might need to shift it around to show it's really coming out of the governor's office instead of borrowing from other agencies. And those are the things that we're working through as a staff. My chief of staff is working through uh, Michael Junk. Uh, but as far as the net dollars, no, we should be able to be the same or less than what was operated last year. Uh, but we do, we, we, we do want to make sure Oklahoma's hired me to be the chief executive of the executive branch, and that is to run all the state agencies. Uh, not to make laws, but to literally run the agencies. And so we have to have uh, the appropriate staff to make sure that I can hold them accountable, and that's what I'm taking very, very seriously. And uh, if we need it, I'll come back and tell Oklahomans or tell the legislature that here's what we need and here's the outcome if, when, we, when we get that. One more question. You talked about education uh, in your inaugural address. You mentioned education and criminal justice as two priority areas for you. Uh, do you have any kind of policy ideas that are starting to crystallize in those areas? Uh, you know, generally speaking, what kind of changes would you like to see? Uh, you know, we absolutely do. Uh, I don't want to, 
I'll give you a little teaser because uh, we're going to be rolling out the policy on February 4th when we uh, work with the House the Senate to make sure that we uh, are on the same page and when we roll it out we're going to get it done. Uh, but you know, the, the big picture is, you know, criminal justice, you, you, I, I, as a business person and a, as a new governor, I want to do everything right now. But I know if you try to do everything, you get nothing done. So I've got to really prioritize. And so I was letting Oklahomans know what my priorities are. And that is obviously education, and it's obviously criminal justice. It's this agency accountability and, uh, you know, digital transformation as well. Um, but the specifics, I'm going to wait till February 4th to roll those out for you. And, uh, but it's going to be exciting, and we're going we're gonna to go big.